So 9 and 8 is 8, 5 and 3 is 8. All right, so I can do that for any number and show how the values are intersecting. And when that works, it makes this whole skin vibrate and channel motion. So before I get back to this, let me just show you ultimately what that turns into. This is called the torus, the toroid. Okay, there's a lot of different names for it. This is this, a coil. It's a sunflower. This is the shape uh, in this system of the universe. It's modeling this compression, decompression. So when you build a torus mathematically, all you're showing on your vertical axis, multiples of 1 and 8, you got your 4 and 5 on your horizontal. Really, this is just one torus. There's other ways to build them. But I'm going to stick with my 1 and my one and 8 is my control. So I have 1 and 8 on the horizontal, 4 and 5. And I've got doubling moving at angular motion. Just like on my symbol, the doubling circuits, it's probably a little hard to see in some of these. Like here would be 1, moving in at an angle towards the center. Here's my linear energy coming out from the center, moving in straight lines. Notice every number it's activating is separated by thirds, which again is probably a little hard to see in this model, but you have 5, 6, 7, 8. This is my 2, 5, and 8 family number group, the moment when it's activated. So you can have your, you have a moment for the 1, 4, 7s, a moment for the 2, 5, 8s, a moment for the 3, 9, 6. It's like a pulsing. It's a phasing or a sequence order. So 2, 5, and 8, they're all separated by thirds. They're separated by thirds on their vertical axis. They're separated by thirds on their horizontal axis. They're separated by thirds on the z-axis. Okay, Because the z-axis is this emanation coming out, giving the number its positive polarity sign symbol and causing a negative backdraft coming back this way, which is gravity, which is entraining everything inwards. And when we talk about entraining, synchronization, that's created by this energy deflecting everything, causing it to vibrate and to center itself around a, a, around a center of gravity. You could say that's why you always have a center of gravity. Again, just so you can look, here's the DNA symbol, and you can see that initial symbol of enlightenment right in here. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, and here's your 9, 3, 6. You can actually see it in the DNA, but we're not going to go into that right now. So, this ultimately makes the shape of the universe. The Big Bang is just one explosion coming out, eventually curving back around and imploding at the top, where it's concentrating all its heat and literally squeezing the energy out, emanates back out, re-enlivening everything. Out of that, you can design a coil. Now the coil that I'm designing now is a little bit different than the standard coil. Whoops, I lost that one. So we're talking about the torus. This again is a version looking from the top half of a torus. You can see these doubling circuits curving in, moving at an angle, forming a vortex. This is why in relativity everything warps and curves. It's warping and curving around a linear imagery, uh, sorry, a linear energy which is imparting to everything its geometric structure and function. Everything is composed of really two aspects, form and function, and that's what mathematics is all about modeling. So here's another picture of a torus. This is the southern half now. Uh, notice it's in a mirror image, the northern half curving in counterclockwise, imploding, the southern half exploding clockwise. And it's still the same one-way motion, but its overarching curvature is now inverted on the southern half. So just like in my symbol, when my number is inverted, that is preserved in the torus. And so this is the torus skin. Right, it's composed. You have to have interlocking multiplication tables. Again, this is just with my control as one. You always have to have doubling, and you always want this 396 to be in between your two pathways of doubling. 
So what I have here, my red nines and threes and sixes, we're going to say are positive. My black ones are negative. Now notice if I'm moving at an angle, I'm preserving positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. Binary flip-flop. Also, as I go from one group here to the next, you can see I've got a positive 9 and, there's a, and my 3 and 6 are negative. And I've got a negative 9, my 6 and 3 are positive. And they're mirror image inversions. Here I've got 1, 2, 4, and now my 1, 2, 4 is over here. 8, 7, 5 here, 8, 7, 5 here. And the 6's and the 3's, they're opposed. So they're forming flip-flopping mirror images. So we're going to have three different stages. One's going to be my red stage. One's going to be my green stage. One's going to be my blue stage. Notice that I'm modeling family number groups. There's only two different kinds of these groups you can have, which gives you, again, the 18 numbers. All right? positive and negative for each number. On this doubling circuit, my 1, 4s and 7s are positive, and my 2, 8s and 5s are negative. On this doubling circuit, my 2, 8s and 5s are positive, and 1, 4s and 7s are negative. So in my first sequence, I start with a positive 9. What that means is that the, this energy is shooting out of the center. You can say the nucleus or the very center where everything is condensed down, its heat is concentrated, they say that near the center of a black hole, a hundred million suns is the size of a pinhead. That's how dense it is. Okay? And all that heat and that density of matter, and I believe actually the fastest thing traveling through the universe is not light, because even in that black hole where the light cannot escape, sound is being emitted, radiated. And so sound, which we know propagates faster through more dense material, sound moving through that density of matter is faster than even light. And this is sound at its perfect resonance. So in my first group, my 9 is positive when it's emanating out. My 3 and 6 are negative. They're going towards the center. All right? And that would be in this vortice here. And the one next to it on either side of it. Okay, you could say this is a trinity here. On either side, I have a negative 9. And I have 6 and 3 coming out. For every action, there are two half-opposite reactions, a modification of Newton's law. All right, so there is my first stage. And as I move along my circuit, I'm still preserving that positive, negative, positive, negative. For every etheron that comes out, we have two parts magnetism that react to it instantaneously. That's why magnetism is the fastest, and it's the control for electricity. These doubling circuits modeling motion vibration, which is all electricity is, electrons moving through a wire, are showing now two electrical moments, two moments of activation. One is my 1, 4s, and 7s. Notice if I go on my horizontal, 1, 2, 3, there's a 4. I can go 1, 2, 3, 7, 3. If those numbers are separated by thirds on my horizontal, one, two, three, one, two, three. All my greens are separated by thirds. But going at an angle, they're one, two, you know, they're every other one. They're positive, negative, positive, negative. So as this energy is synchronizing every different axis, it's actually creating a flow, a motion. So I go first, my 3, 9, and 6 are all positive, negative. Next, my 1, 4 is a 7. And on the next one, my 2, 5, and 8. So it's a 1, 2, 3 sequence, a three part sequence. Again, family number group 1 is a 3, 9, 6. Family number group 2, 1, 4, and 7. Family number group 3, 2, 8, and 5. This is essential to understand for understanding how to perfectly model compression and decompression, no matter what you're talking about, no matter what the medium. These doubling circuits are the pathways of motion. Okay, so we feel pretty comfortable with that.